Well, it's time to use Blender to solve a common problem with 3D printing where somebody decides to give you an STL file with pre-made supports, but what you really want is just the miniature. Welcome everybody, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield, and here I am inside Blender, and today I want to show you how you can remove integrated supports from STL files you might get from the internet. So let me import two different STL files, and I'm going to show you two slightly different ways that you can remove these supports. To import an STL file in the Blender, you want to go up to File, choose Import, and then choose STL. This will open up a file dialog box. You can navigate through your computer to import the files. So here are the two files I'm going to be working with today. Over here on the right, this is the Mostly Harmless Miniature. I created this guy in kind of a workflow tutorial in my last video, link in the show notes. Over here on the left, this is a Surakari Virgo, a recently released miniature from my tabletop miniatures game Legends of Kaladagi. It's an abstract physics space combat game. You can find this miniature for sale as well as its STL over at Kaladagia.com. Once again, link in the show notes. Now, two quick notes before we get started here that are important to this process. Both these miniatures, their supports were created just automatically inside of Prusa Slicer. This process would work if someone manually created the supports, but just it doesn't really matter for the purpose of this tutorial whether they're automatically created or manually created. But what is important is that the supports were generated in the Slicer program outside the original sculpting program. Because possibly if somebody, say, made supports here in Blender, which I suppose you could do, they're going to be connected to the miniature differently, and this process I'm going to show you might not work. Now, the other thing you have to know about in terms of choosing which one of these two workflows I'm going to show you is how many meshes each miniature is made from. In Blender, a mesh is one of the 3D geometry math things that are used to build these models, and they basically are all little points that are connected together with lines and faces and all sorts of stuff. And miniatures can be made with a small number of meshes, like for example, Mostly Harmless over here I know is made with two different meshes. And a lot of sculpted gaming miniatures are going to have this thing where there will probably be only a few meshes to them. Now over here, the Virgo is a mechanical one that was built by Pacey taking a lot of individual meshes and putting them together. So this guy over here is made with a whole bunch of different meshes, and therefore I'm going to use a different process for him. The tricky part though is if you don't know how the miniature was made, you're not going to know which process is best until you get in and start kind of messing around with things, but you'll find out pretty quickly it's not hard to determine that. So let's start with the first process, which is good for miniatures with a small number of meshes. And like I said, if you don't know how many meshes a miniature is made, start at this point and you can see very quickly if it's going to be a problem or not. So let me left click on the miniature I want to work with, then press tab to enter edit mode. This may take a while depending on your computer, and now you can see all the little dots. So all these little dots are vertices, all the little lines connecting them are called edges, and all the filled in spaces in here, those are called faces. Those three things combined are what make a mesh. If anything is orange like it is right now, double tap A on the keyboard. What that'll do is that'll deselect everything in the mesh. Now, here's what we gotta do. Start by selecting a vertex, so that's these little points here. Select one of those on your miniature, left click on it, and then you're gonna do Control L. Control L is what's called a linked select. It will select all the vertices that are somehow connected to that particular vertice, and therefore select the entire mesh. Now you can see here that the body of Mostly Harmless is all selected, but as I is not. Therefore I know, because the eye was not selected, that the eye is a separate mesh. Now what I can do to solve this problem, I can now hold down shift and left click on one of the vertices in the eye, and then do control L again, and that will select everything as part of the eye. It looks at this point that the entire miniature is selected. Notice none of the supports are selected, just the miniature. So I think I've probably got all the meshes of the miniature selected, and I'm good to go ahead and separate this guy from the supports. So I'm going to press P, and this will bring up the separate menu, choose selection, which is going to basically take everything you have selected and break it apart into a separate object. Once again, it may take a moment or two, and now you can see I can still see all the little vertices of the support material, 
but I can't see all the vertices of mostly harmless because he's now a separate object. Press tab to jump back into object mode and then just left click on the miniature itself. And what you can do at this point, press G. This allows you to move objects around in Blender. And look at that. <laughs> mostly harmless is free from his support structure. So for some miniatures, it can be that simple. If you wanted to rotate them in a different direction, you can kind of jump around and blender, do some navigation. You can press R to rotate them. It's a little bit more of a, probably beyond the scope of this tutorial, but you can look up how to rotate objects in Blender if you're really curious. And then I can just re-export this guy as an STL. But before I do that, what I really need to do, just as a safety check, this probably isn't required, but as a safety check is a good idea. Press tab to jump back into edit mode. Press A to select everything and choose shift N. This is recalculate normals. It's a behind the scenes math check thing that helps with 3D printing. Just do that and nothing should visually change most of the time. <laughs> If something does visually change, there's something terribly wrong with your mesh. But in this case, just press tab to get back out of edit mode and back into object mode. And now what you can do is export this guy as an STL. Let's go up to File, Export, STL, and it's going to bring up a file dialog box. And the key thing here is up the top, you want to enter in your STL file name. And then under export STL over here, now this may be in the lower left hand corner if you're on a big monitor, it may be on the right side if you're on a small monitor, and you may need to expand it out if you just see the words export STL, but be sure to choose selection only. This way it will only export the object you have selected as the STL file and it won't include everything else in your Blender file which may include the support material that you want to get rid of. Hit export STL and away you go. All right, with that guy done, let's take a look at the Suricari Virgo. Now this is, next process is kind of an inverse of what we just did. Now watch what happens when I go to edit mode, press tab to jump back into that, and let's see what happens when I start trying to select some of the meshes. So double tap A to deselect everything. I'm gonna select one point there, control L, try it again, control L, and you can see what's going on here with this miniature, the way it was built, it's built of a ton of different separate meshes. And you can see that pretty quickly because whereas the mostly harmless, I could do one control L and select nearly the entire miniature. I can't do that with the Virgo. So what I have to do here is essentially do a reverse process where instead of trying to separate out the miniature, I need to remove all the support material. So let's double tap A again, deselect everything. So here's how this is going to work. I need to do what's called a box select. I press B and let's see it forms a little crosshair things. And I drag these over some pieces of the support. It's very important that I do not select any of the miniature. And then I do control L. And basically what I'm doing is now I'm selecting parts of the support instead of selecting a part of the miniature. I'm looking around, make sure I didn't accidentally select any of the miniature. And then I'm going to press X for delete. And the menu that pops up, choose vertices. And you can see now that chunk of the support is gone. And I'm going to repeat this process until all the support pieces are gone. And let's just say, just for reference purposes, I do that. Not, not paying attention, delete. Oh crap, I just deleted part of the miniature. Control Z and that'll back you up one step because that's the undo button and it's so important in Blender. <laughs> and you can do multiple box selects if you want and then just do one control L, it's kind of up to you. It's a matter of what you're comfortable with. When you get to this point where there's not a lot of supports left and might be kind of tricky to use the box select without accidentally selecting part of the miniature, you can just go ahead and click once on one support pieces, then shift left click on a vertice on additional support pieces. And therefore, as long as you have one vertice on each of the supports selected, when you go and do control L for the link select, 
it will go ahead and select all of that support feed. And at this point, it does help to have an understanding of what the miniature should look like. Just for example, in this case, I've got these little cooling systems right here that are on the Suricari Virgo that may look kind of like support material because they are um, you know, little rods and sometimes you get support material that goes across the top of the miniature or whatnot. But of course, I designed this Suricari Virgo so I know these are part of the miniature and not support material. But it is important to at least have a basic understanding of what the miniature looks like. And from there, I think I have got all the support material removed. So let's do the last few important steps. So I can hit A, now to select the entire thing, do Shift N, once again, recalculating math, press Tab to get out of edit mode, and then I can just export this guy as an STL and then rebuild the supports as desired in my Slicer program. All right, well, there you go. That is how you can go ahead and free your miniatures from pre-made supports. So once again, I'm Jason, the creator of the Tabletop Battlefield. If you like more Blender videos like this and want to learn more about 3D modeling for tabletop gaming and cosplay, hit subscribe, hit that like button, and of course, share this video because for some reason, oddly enough, I couldn't find another video on this topic. <laughs> and I know there's people who are interested in this because I actually got to this process because I had a friend who um, got some STL files from a recent Kickstarter and they came with these supports pre-attached. He's having trouble printing parts of the miniatures, so they wanted me to see if I could remove them, and I was able to figure out this process for him. So, with that, thanks for watching once again, because I think I just said that 30 seconds ago, and have a great week.